Hey, what's going on guys? Do you love SD kits? Well, I think some of you do, and as you may well know, I particularly don't really like SD kits all that much, uh, but I know a lot of you guys do, and I do have some reasons for wanting to pick up a couple of these ones here that I've got that I'm going to be reviewing for you guys. So, the ones that we're going to be going through here are, of course, the Kasi SD kit, and you guys can probably guess why I got that one if you think about the upcoming release of the HG. Then we also have the Camphor and the a little bit more obscure one, the Aquarius Gundam, which is or Gundam Aquarius, which is a pretty odd one here from actually G Unit, I believe. It's a G Unit design or something. It's from Gundam Wing or it's from G Generations F, but I think it's a Wing related release. Considering that it's got the Epion in the background, but it's honestly not one that I know particularly all that much about. So because this one is definitely the most obscure, it's the one that I'm most interested in checking out straight away. So this is the one we'll be taking a look at today, and the other two we'll be taking a look at in the next upcoming video. So for now, let's go ahead and check out the SD. I was about to say. HD SD Aquarius gun the Gundam Aquarius fuck so the Gundam Aquarius here something that didn't ever actually appear in either the wing series or in the endless waltz movie but it did uh, uh, I guess in theory exist in canon it was featured in the G generations F game apparently so you have that it's a pretty wild design so I'd love to see an actual like full-size version kit of this whether it be HG or whatever and I guess the, probably that would that's what it would be but I don't think that's ever going to happen unfortunately Although I think it would be pretty cool. It's an interesting design. So here on the front of the box art, like I said, you can see the Epion there in the background, also available in SD kit, of course. And then on the ends, you can see there's actually number 50 in the SDG Generations F lineup here. And this is over here on the side, shown as a fully painted model here. You can see the front and back. There it does have some massive gaps there in the back of these parts there on the shoulder there, of course. And this very interesting gimmick there with the kind of extendo arm, or what am I looking at there? I'm not really too sure. But it does have a lot of really nice detail on there. It's just, of course, going to take some uh, major masking in order to get that painted up correctly, because I'm sure out of the box it's not going to have any of that color separation there. Uh, oh yes, that's this sort of, uh, sort of uh, chain uh, heat rod. There it is. Heat rod, I guess is what we're looking at there, which is also featured on the front of the box. Around on the other side, there's nothing really too much to see here, so let's go ahead and just get it opened up. Alright, so it looks like we've got basically two colors, uh, maybe three, sort of, uh, molded there on the runners. We'll take a look at those in just a minute, but first off, the manual, just very small, simple manual here. On the back, you got some more information, basically about the Gundam there and its weapon. And then down here, also you can see the Epion, the Wing Zero, and the Tall Geese their other SD kits. Inside we've got our uh, parts list there and the construction which I'm guessing shouldn't take all that long or shouldn't be too complicated with it being a pretty simple older SD kit which by the way came out all the way back in the year 2000. So this one's been out for over 20 years now at this point. So here is what the sticker sheet is going to look like with this being an SD kit. Of course, there's going to be a lot of color correcting stickers. Honestly, not as many as, as I was expecting, but I'm sure there's, even if with the use of this sticker sheet, there's still going to be lots of colors missing from this, uh, but we'll see how these end up looking on the kit. And then these gray parts in here are actually polycaps. So this is PC21 for just two big polycap parts there in light gray. And our A1 here, obviously in blue, so you can see some of the body parts and those big shoulder parts with the big gaps there in the back and all that, but some nice detail in there anyway. Runner A2 for the rest of our blue parts, including some parts there for the head. And then runner B here in red, including some red parts there for the kit. And the heat rod, which is molded in red instead of gray. That's unfortunate. So there you have it, guys. Let me go ahead and put this together and we'll see how it looks. All right, guys, so here is the kit all built up, and I gotta say, it's, a, I mean, it's pretty cool looking as far as SD kits go. It's certainly got that SD style of having the torso and waist sections squished just super flat, and basically the feet just plugged up right into the bottom side of the hip section. There's no legs on there at all, so it's a goofy looking, but I think it ends up looking actually kind of cool just because of the design of it. And stickers, I mean, nobody likes stickers, but I gotta say the stickers do certainly help a lot on this kit, you know, whether you're planning to use them or not. Of course, if you're not planning on using them, you're in for a lot of masking and painting in order to get this looking anywhere color accurate. But if you're used to building SD kits, that shouldn't come as a surprise to you. But I think if you don't mind the stickers, if you're just buying this to, you know, just have this a cheap little SD kit, just because you like the design or whatever, you want to just throw it up on your shelf or whatever, uh, have it on your desk or something, then I think the stickers don't look that bad on it at all. And actually they add quite a lot of color onto that kit, which otherwise would just be just basically all this dark blue with a couple of red pieces looking 
pretty. Basically, what you can see, a good example would be looking at the front side and the back side of the kit. The back side has no stickers on it, and you can see how plain and just kind of basic that looks versus the front side, which looks a lot more interesting because it's a lot more colorful. But alright, just to take a look at the kit now here in hand, these are the two accessories, basically the heat rods. One goes on this side like that, it basically looks sort of like a less active or inactive version I suppose. Less of an action pose with that one and this extended one which I guess is supposed to look a little bit more like uh, it's actually in use. Now how these work basically just to show you here on the back side of the arm that's hollow these just kind of slot into place here right into the back. So I mean from the back it's going to look a bit odd but as long as you're looking at it from the front or if you have the arm extended out like that it's going to look like a little chameleon tongue just sticking out of his arm there like that. And as for the articulation the shoulders can just basically rotate like that. The arms can rotate in their position a little bit like that. The head can rotate the upper and uh, lower half of the body can rotate a little bit there like that. And the feet you can move those around a slight bit a little bit too basically a little bit of rotation there. Here's what it looks like from underneath and it looks like you can probably plug this up onto an action base but the problem is that you'll have to try to fit that up in between the feet which might be the larger challenge. Probably you're just gonna keep this just standing on the ground and again I think the stickers do add a lot of color here onto the front which is nice or on the back uh, yeah it's just kind of lacking and it's not color accurate at all just looking at this this lighter blue color that you see for the front skirts actually like the whole skirt section is supposed to be in that color these parts here on the back which are in red are supposed to be in that same color also like the lower part of the back of the head is also supposed to be in that color and so on and so forth the top of the feet are supposed to be in a different color speaking of the top of the feet though and with this kit in general it doesn't have very much in the way of seam lines which is really really nice here on the shoulder parts you have a little bit of seam right there and this all over here, this is just this all a mold line. So you'll have to sand that. That'd be a lot of sanding to remove all the molding, mold lines on the shoulder parts. But there's no seam except for just a little bit right there, which is covered up pretty well by this massive head anyway. So you kind of don't really see that. And then the feet as well too, instead of being two halves sandwiched together uh, left to right, it's just two pieces on the top and bottom, which close together and so you don't have any seam line there. And then this little uh, thin piece out the front is a separate piece that goes into there. So no seam lines here on the feet as well too. And they're pretty cool feet designs, honestly. And they look kind of right, right about this similar size to like an HG144 scale kit's feet. So I could definitely see these being useful for making some sort of like HG kit bash and just using these for just a regular HG kit. Honestly, they would work quite well, I think. Last thing though, there is of course a seam line here on the top of the head though as well too. That goes all the way across the top part of the head and then back down the back of the head there and then here on the backpack a little seam line down the center of that and then no seam line on these red parts but those are also completely hollow on the inside but again if you're just having the kit standing you're never going to see that because it's going to be standing basically on the ground and those uh, hollow spaces won't show so uh, I really really like the head design of this that was basically my entire reason for wanting to check out this kit because I thought it's a cool head design and this would make for a really good kit bash for doing an SD HG kit bash not making a HG 144 scale version of this Gundam but just making a, a kit bash so I think like the feet could actually be quite useful for that too the head the shoulders actually would be kind of interesting to see how those would look on like a 144 scale uh, kits arms and torso using these uh, very unique shoulder parts there as well too you have some hollow gaps here in the back of the shoulder but I think it's not that big a deal in my personal opinion I don't really mind it that much because you have this part here on the back of the shoulder with some detail that goes kind of up into the hollow spaces so it doesn't look necessarily all that strange but alright guys that is really just about gonna be it for this kit it's a really interesting design very unique I really wish that we would get like a full version of this design as like an HG kit or something someday that would be cool I'm not holding my breath on that I don't think that's ever gonna happen because uh, it's kind of obscure but it would be cool and as far as this SD kit goes I mean it's um, not great it's got a lot of stickers it's got a couple of seam lines on there as though I explained though it's not all that bad I think in my opinion but at the end of the day, for a just kit that's only going to cost you a few bucks, it's not that bad at all. And especially if you're planning on using it for a kit bash material, then, you know, you certainly got some cool parts to work with there, I think. It's not going to be a kit that necessarily comes with a whole lot. It's basically just have like a couple of heat rods, which are kind of lackluster. The shape of them is kind of odd, not really all that interesting. The color is totally wrong. But I mean, they'd be easy enough to just paint into a different color, I think. Pretty simple to do that. But if you were looking for a kit that uh, would have a little bit more in the way of weapons and accessories and stuff, then obviously it's not one that would be all that appealing to you. But I think it's a pretty interesting one, so check it out if you can. 
As always guys, the link to US Gundam store will be down in the video description below. You can check there and see all the different uh, cool kits we've got in stock there. And you can use save 10% off everything on the website there using my coupon code, Zacharelius10. So check that out in the video description as well. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. Hope this was interesting to take a look at a little bit more obscure SD kit here. Something that's not very common to see here on my channel. So I hope that was interesting for y'all. Till next time, I hope you're all having a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.